What's up guys, it is Lichi here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am making the ultimate beginner's guide to Royale High for School 3. If you are like me and just started playing this game in the last couple of weeks, I had no idea what was going on with Royale High. I feel like there's so many different things that are so confusing to learn on your own, so I basically wanted to put together a in-depth but also like basic guide for people who are just starting to play this game on Roblox. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let me talk through the tutorial. Basically, you need to choose an element. As you can see here, I have the water element. There are two ways of figuring out your designation. The first time that you log in, they will ask you to do like a practical test or a written test. If you choose a practical test, which is what I did, they put you through some like water trials. Honestly, I found the water one pretty easy. If I remember correctly, it was just like, you need to go underwater and like swim a little bit to try some obstacles. I think I also tried the nature fairy one for a little bit, but it was like basically obbies and jumping around and trying not to fall. And I was pretty bad at that and I'm not good at obbies. So I gave up on nature pretty quick. I don't really know what's going on with the other elements and I haven't really tried their exams. I'm sure there's a video out there that has them more in depth or I might make a video on that later on, but so far, basically, all you need to know is you need to choose an element. Basically, there's no like real impact as far as I can tell in terms of the elements because you can go and add the other elements later on, but it does determine your like flying wing colors. As you can see, mine are like blue and pink, which I love, and because I'm water, it has these little like water drops. So it's cute, basically. I think the second thing to go over is how to fly and basically just like fly around in the campus and go to different areas. There's also other ways to go around. Um, for example, you can just walk and then if you click this button, you can run and that does make it slightly faster. There's no like falling damage or anything, so you can just fall off really high places and it really won't matter. You can jump into water or anything like that that you want. If you have trouble with the controls for flying, and it definitely took me a second to get used to it too, definitely check out my other video for some more in-depth tips. Anyways, I think what happens next after you choose your elements is they will tell you to fly from the forest into the school, which is where I am now. You can see over on this side is where the forest is. I remember like, yeah, you come out of that I, I think I can't go back. Dude, I can't leave anymore. Um, but over there in the distance is the different elemental gates, and then they tell you to like come fly through these main gates. The first thing that you need to do is basically go to the front office. So just bypass this whole fountain and entrance and go straight in. And yeah, as you can see, here's a sign for the front office. Just go straight through these doors. Okay, so this is the office location. Um, you're gonna have to talk to Poppy and it's this girl here. You can see her from the pointing exclamation point with the with the wings. I guess it's kind of hard because there's just a lot of people crowding her desk right now. But basically all you have to do is talk to Poppy like that, interact with her. Uh, I think the first time you talk to her, she gives some other different like menu items and it gives you a guide and a couple other things. I don't remember exactly what, but you unlock some new menu items when you talk to her for the first time that you activate the game. Obviously right now, uh, since I've already gone through the beginning tutorial, it's not showing up. So once you talk to Poppy and get the menu, there's kind of a lot of different things. So I will walk through everything step by step for you guys. So first let's start at the top, Royale High. When you click this, it's just the student handbooks, which means just rules and other things. Uh, personally, I don't really use this at all. You can just go ahead and close that. Music, obviously it's music. Settings, you have a couple of settings. You can read through these. I think some interesting ones is if you don't like my little wand and the rainbow trail, you can just go ahead and disable those. Personally, I like them on. You can disable the Roblox chat. You can turn off this like other other stuff, uh, trade settings, hide names, whatever. Basically, here's the general game settings. Gems, okay, or diamonds, sorry. 
So basically you can just see at the top uh, what your current count of diamonds is. If you press on it, you can purchase more with Robux. Next is your level count. Basically you can tell what your level is here. There's another way to tell the level, which is opening up here and you can see like the grade level and this one also has the percent full. I will go into more detail on this later. This is the castle events updates. I also don't really read this often, but if they have like different updates or small fixes and stuff, they will typically list them here. And you can go back to any time they make an update and see what the updates were. Here is a link to your journal diary. I will go into this in more detail later because it's pretty important. And finally, here is the heart thing on the top bar. This basically shows like your self-care needs. Right now I have 0% at hunger and 0% at my hygiene, but I have 30% of sleep. You're basically supposed to try to keep these at 100% and I will go over this in more detail and show you guys how to fill it and what are the best ways to fill it. Cool, so that is the top menu. You may also notice that there's this like side slider this top thing is actually a button and it is a game contact thing. So basically you can like go visit your friends, you can message them, stuff like that. I don't really use this super often to be honest with you guys. And you can close it here. Next, we already talked about the gem count and then here is the option to dress up. So I will go into this in more detail later, but basically here's where you can like change your outfit and customize your character. Castle map, I will go over it later. Here is another link to the diary that I showed you before. It's the same as this button up here. Here we got go shopping. I don't really use this too much because I find it kind of confusing, but basically you can buy like different types of items here. Next is animations. I also feel like this is not super important, but you can basically just like set up your animations with hotkeys and things like that. I only do this if I like feel like taking a picture somewhere. Normally, I don't feel like it has any use in the game. And then the powers and students, we already talked about this. Uh, I don't feel like there's a reason or like, I don't know what happens when you look at the list of different students in the different areas. I feel like nothing happens. If you click on your power here, this whole thing spins and basically it has activated my powers in my hands. Um, if you don't want that, I will show you this, which is your inventory slash bag. So you do have a locker and a room, which I will talk about later, but basically you can carry like a lot of stuff around with you too. I have it stocked with a bunch of snacks and random stuff. I haven't found a limit to this so far, but I have about 59 items right now. If you want to take something out to use it, you can press on the item and basically you can see it shows up here. You want to put it back in the bag, then click the bag thing on the side. Sometimes uh, there's items that will just like automatically appear in your hands. For example, if you need to unlock a door, the dorm key will always just like come out and you can put it back. But this is where you find things that you want to carry around with you. And I think that's everything in the menu. Okay, next topic, let's talk about the game objectives. Basically the objectives of the game pretty much is to gain gems and experience. Why do you need gems? As far as I can tell, basically you can buy different items like in the shop that I showed you and especially decorate your dorm seems to be like my main motivation at the moment. You can get gems from chests, leveling up, finding hearts around the campus. You might have noticed so far in this video, there's a couple times when there's just like a floating heart. Oh, there's one over there. Basically, all you have to do is run into it and you can get like usually a couple of gems. That one was one gem. This one's also gonna be one, but whatever. Yeah, there's other ways that you can get gems, which I will go over in obviously more detail. Sorry, I feel like I keep saying that, but there's just so many different things to go over with this game. Ways to get gems, chests level up. Every time you level up, you get 300 gems and you can find the gems around campus. And experience is the other thing that I mentioned that you need to always be grinding. Experience just helps you level up and unlock different features. So as you can see, my grade level currently is 92 and you can see it's 6% full. Every time you level up, you also get gems. So basically it's in your best interest to always continuously get gems and experience points. 
You can also check in this diary planner. This is like one of the most useful things in the entire like menu, but you can see here the sparkly star achievements. So these are things that you unlock in the game or like features that you unlock based on your level. Basically, you can see here um, is an example. If I wanted to save different slots and designs on my locker, I achieved this on September 15th and I had to reach level 65 in order to unlock it. And what's crazy is this goes really deep. As you can see, there's 48 different of these like things that you can unlock and it goes all the way to level 1500, then you can enter the teacher's lounge. I don't know how many people are at this level. Seems kind of crazy to me, honestly. Another feature which is interesting is like, if you want to go through portals with your friends, for example, it will tell you like how many more levels that you need to achieve. I think one thing that's pretty good about Royale High is that the levels don't get harder to pass the more you go up. Like some games, level one to level two is like, five points and then level two to level three is like 10 points and it just keeps getting harder. But as far as I can tell, that's not really the case with Royale High. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so I should probably go through the diary planner in more detail at this point. Basically, we know that the main goals of the game is to earn gems and experience. So I mentioned that there are a couple ways to earn gems. Let's talk about experience. The main thing that you're going to have to do is these quests. So you can see that they have the quest description. They tell you how long it takes to complete it and then how much experience you get for it. Obviously, you should prioritize things that give you more experience or things that are like easy for you. The more that you do these in the game, the more you'll get a sense of like which ones you like and dislike and which ones are fast and slow. Some of them are also complicated. For example, hot tub time, like you will know which areas have a hot tub. You also have to know that like grab your bathing suit means that you actually have to change into a swim outfit. I'll do a couple of these as an example, like closer to the end of the video. Just know that this is where you find quests in your planner. Another way to get experience and gems is to do these dailies schedule. I think this tidy textbooks like locker ready to clean thing is like kind of broken the last time I checked. The dream fountain, I'll show you guys where to do that. Okay, so this is the dream fountain basically. It's at the very front of the school. You can see here dream fountain, make a wish and you interact with that. Right now I have already completed it. You can interact with the dream fountain like once every two hours. So I haven't hit that like time yet, but basically you can also see like within the planner when the countdown will let you go back and do it again. Student portal login. I think the laptop is one of the items that Poppy gives you when you talk with her. All right, we are here in my dorm. As you can see, I have just placed my laptop on the ground, but all you have to do is come here and start interacting with your laptop. Basically, you can see that there is a student portal. All you have to do is come here and check in and click the attendance. It also gives you the specific times that you can come and check in at. To close the laptop, you just hit this close laptop. There you go. Okay, and the last countdown thing in the daily schedule is the Wheel of Divinia. You actually have to go to Earth for this. I was kind of confused because it said West Campus, but in order to teleport, I will go over this later, but hit the campus map thing, hit Royale World and go to Earth and summon the magic portal. You'll get this stick thing, it'll create a little portal for you and you just like walk towards it and yeah, you find this like your portal thing and you just interact with that. So that should land you over here and then all you do is go straight forward and you can usually see like a crowd of people standing here in front of the wheel and then you just try to interact with this. Um, I don't have the ability to spin right now, but Basically, it will always tell you with the timer. So yeah, I think that sums up everything on the daily schedule. All right, guys. So the next thing that we need to go over is the self-care needs. Basically, I said earlier that I would get back to this and it's finally time. So you can see the self-care needs by clicking this heart up here right now because I have been filming and neglecting it. I am at 0% for everything. 
You can also check the daily self-care needs by going to your notebook, turning the page, and here you can see self-care needs. And pretty much I'm at same thing, 0% for all of these. I will show you guys how to fill each one. So first, let's look at food. Basically, around the campus, there are areas where you will see these sorts of vending machines. You can click look closer and use 25 diamonds to buy a snack. I happen to also have that as a quest. You can also buy drinks at the drink machine and you will get those in your hand as soon as you buy them. I also showed you guys in my backpack that I have tons of these just stocked in case I need to fill my hunger and I'm not near a machine. But basically, you just interact with it, you'll get an animation of unwrapping it and eating it, and then you will basically see your hunger slowly go up. One thing that's like confused me a bit when I started this, you can see this like strawberry punch has three sips. When you click the bottle again, now it's two sips. So yeah, you're going to have to keep pressing it in order to finish this item, which is kind of unfortunate because sometimes that can be slow, but it is what it is. Filling the self-care bars is a great way to get experience and level up more quickly. There we go. So my hunger is at 100%. I usually just toss all my uneaten snacks back into my bag. Let's do the next thing, which is hygiene. As you can see, I'm gaining so much experience from simply feeding myself. And now we're at 86%. I think if we shower, we will be good. So we are here in the dormitory uh, shower area, I guess. So basically you come down into this underground area and you can see all these different shower stalls. I could just go into one which isn't occupied and just come and stand under the water. If the water is off, you can actually turn it on or off by hitting this button and then you'll like stop showering. So just in case you go into a shower where the water's not on, that's how you turn it on. And pretty much just wait, you can see the hygiene bar slowly filling up. All right, guys, so we're finally at 100% for the hygiene. Um, as you can see, I am leveling up because we closed that bar. The next thing that we should tackle is the sleep need. And to do that, let's leave this entire bathroom, dorm bathroom situation and head back to our dorm room. All right, so we are back here in our castle dorm. Real quick, let me show you guys how to set up your dorm. Basically, any areas where you see the doors that have like the rainbow aura around them is an unclaimed dorm. For example, this door doesn't have the aura, so this is definitely somebody else's dorm. Um, let's go ahead and go to this one. Basically, you can just claim it by unlocking it with your key and click open here. And to fill the sleep need, just go near a bed and then hit the sleep thing. And then as you can see, we'll get the energy bar filled up. One issue is that it is pretty difficult to save up to buy a bed. Like I think this one was maybe 15,000 gems or something. So one of the hacks that I was using was basically you can open this menu and when you're in your dorm, you'll get this like decorate builder hat thing. And then you can click furniture and go to the shopping and just search like bed and then you can choose one of the beds like this platform marshmallow one click try and then it drags it into your room then when you go near this you can actually just sleep on this bed which you don't own yeah i used that before i was able to buy my own bed you don't actually even have to be on the bed you just have to be close to it and choose a sleep animation so yeah, that's also a crash course about how to set up your dorm and decorate it as well. Um, more on the decoration, I guess. You can use this remote thing to move around the items in your room. I think that if you just click this like question mark thing, it'll explain it in way more detail if you're curious on how to use it. So I won't go over it in this video.
All right, so we filled our energy to 100%. All you have to do to stop sleeping is move away from the bed area. If you want to get rid of this bed that you like dragged into your room, just click exit and don't buy it and it'll just disappear. So yeah, that's pretty much it about the dorm. The other place that you can use this like decorate thing is at your locker. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to claim and set up the lockers too. All right, so we're here in the locker courtyard area. Basically, anywhere that you see rows of lockers, just come towards it, randomly click on one. I think the first time you set it up, they'll tell you to enter a combination in order to unlock it. If you forget it, I guess you can create a new one. But yeah, enter whatever your combination is, click enter, and you can open your locker like this. There is also a quest that makes you open the locker, which I coincidentally just completed and this slider just like close and opens your locker door again you can see this menu pop up and you can basically like decorate your locker in different ways i have pretty much done nothing with my locker so yeah there's nothing interesting here all right guys we've been going through so much information a couple more topics that i think are pretty important for you guys um in terms of the notebook we have been coincidentally repeating some quests but i just want to go over these in more detail just to review the information that we have on quests quests are a great way in order to get more experience quickly and when you get more experience you get more diamonds so it's a win-win situation i always recommend doing the quests, especially if they are simple and easy one issue is that like once you start off on the game you will probably just have one quest slot which means that you always have to complete that one quest when you have more quest slots it's more beneficial because basically if you're in one area you can complete like maybe two of the quests or you can be more strategic about going to different places you will also be able to say like hey i only have like five minutes before i need to log off so i'm gonna do the quest that gives me more experience and like prioritize them better and stuff if you happen to get a quest that you don't really want to do or don't like basically just wait for it to time out and it'll give you a different quest if you don't know how to do a specific quest i think that there are resources on youtube to help you guys out if you guys want, I'll also make a video and uh, do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to complete every single quest. All right, next thing, uh, I think I said I would come back to showing you guys how to use this castle map. So you might have seen me do the teleporting thing. You click this and you show up with this map. Basically on this new Campus 3, there are five different areas that you can go. I would recommend basically trying to minimize jumping between places because the load time is pretty long and it's just like boring. Currently we are in the locker courtyard. You can click it and you can see that it gives some, uh, I guess, explanation about what's here. So um, things that I come to locker courtyard for, yeah, if I have to go to my locker, if I need to go to class, if I have to do a task, which is homework, um, powder rooms, they have sinks and stuff um yeah stuff like that basically is in the locker courtyard and then the dorm bathing quarters this is where i showed you guys the showers they also have vending machines uh they have laundry here next is the castle dorm so if i need to go to my room if i need to sleep the hot tubs are here and there's like a lounging by the pool quest that happens here as well school office um if you need to talk to poppy if you need to go to the headmaster's office if you need to get a pe shirt go to lost and found all of that is pretty much at the school office and then main campus this is pretty much just like the entrance area that we showed so you would come here to do the wishing fountain to honk the bus to uh study by the fountain um I can't think of any other quests, but yeah, pretty much all you have to do to do this is click summon magic portal. And then you got this little animation thing and then it comes up with this like portal. So like I showed you guys before, just walk towards it and interact with the little thing. All right, guys. So the last thing I wanted to show you was an example of doing a quest and also how the outfits tie into that. I got lucky because this quest hot tub time is basically a perfect example. Grab your bathing suit and have some fun in the bubbles in the dorm's mermaid hot tub. So as I mentioned, you'll start to like remember what things are where. So 
for the hot tub quest, we have to go to the castle dorms. All right, so we're here in the castle dorm. We need to go up the stairs and then enter in this door, wait for it to open. And our quest was hot tub, and this is one of the hot tubs. But as you can see, when I enter, it doesn't have like the quest completion marker. And the reason for that is because one of the requirements of this quest is grab your bathing suit. So what that means is we actually need to go to dress up outfits, swim section, and put on any random swimsuit that we want. I'll just go with this pink cat one, which is very cute. And the second I put it on, you can see that the timer started going. A hack for you guys is that you can go to your outfit section here and there are like a couple of quests that always require you to change outfits like one is wearing like an old PE shirt one is run a mile so you need to wear like the active style of outfit there's swim uh, there's one which is take a nap but you need to wear your pajamas and then I just have like my regular outfit saved um, so if you have these quests regularly, I would recommend instead of just choosing like a random outfit, you just can come here and for swim, I just wear this outfit and then I'm always wearing the swimsuit in order to complete this quest. So yeah, I really tried to explain everything that I could about being a beginner starting off in Royal High at the new campus. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If there's anything that you guys think is a little confusing, I could have explained better, or you want some more like advanced or specific information, please do leave it in the comments and I will make sure to put out some content for that. I basically wanted to do this as like a overall guide for anyone who is just trying to like figure out how to play on their first day. If there are tips that I just missed in general and you are a pro Royale High player and you think that a beginner would need to know it, please leave it in the comments so that everyone can learn something. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like on this video and subscribe if it was helpful and see you guys next time. Bye.